Eternal God, our Father, we uh, thank you for today. We thank you for the renewed interest in city government here in West Memphis. We ask that you bless these proceedings and uh, that you use them and use each of these council representatives to further your good cause. And we pray this in the name of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Clerk, will you please call the roll? Mayor McClendon. Present. City Attorney Stevenson. Here. City Treasurer Martin. Here. Councilor Catt. Councilor Croom. Here. Councilor Harris. Councilor Hope. Here. Councilor Hutchison. <laughs> Councilor Pulliam. Here. Councilor Robertson. Present. Councilor Wheelers. Here. <laughs> and Councilor Monday. Here. We have a quorum being present. Uh, I talked with uh, Councilman Tracy Cat. He had to go to uh, Florida to take his wife. So, with that being said, we're going to bed openings. Uh, we had no bid openings for the park benches and the park table. Uh, Mr. Johnson will rebid those bids out at the May meeting, correct? Yes, sir. And uh, we have we have bids for the installation of the five poles at Hills and Rogers. Can I get a motion? Motion. Right back. Second. Second. We're going to refer them back to the department agents. My second thing here today, I have a pre very special presentation to give out today of someone that's in our city that done a great job in the time in a trial from time she still stood tall and did everything that she could do to save the lives of two young men and i just wanted to honor her and show her that her city appreciate her and her efforts and her efforts is not to go overlooked so i'm going to ask miss laguian cannon will you come forward How you doing? Thank you. I want to recognize this young lady. I know many of you are here that the tragedy that happened around April 5th and April 6th. And this young lady right here happened to be there that night. And when these young men, not knowing them personally, but did have some knowledge of them, when they was wounded, her skills did not make her run out the room. Her skills made her stay in there and fight to try to help save their life. And in order that they did not survive, it was just her efforts and her heroism of trying to say these young men cannot go without being recognized. I mean, when I called and told her that I want to honor her, you know what she told me? She said, I don't want to receive the award because the young men passed. Mm -hmm. But just showing what you've done in, in, in the face of all that was going on, all the chaos that was going on, you did not leave those young men. You stayed with them to the end until our EMTs got there. And I just want to tell you, as your mayor, I'm proud of you, and you are the type of people that made West Memphis the city that it is. So today, the city of West Memphis certificate of appreciation by the Honorable Martha McClendon do hereby honor Ms. LeGuin Cannon. This award is presented to Ms. LeGuin Cannon for demonstrating heroism and skill attempting to save the lives of others on April 6, 2018. Her quick response and recognition of the severity of their medical emergency, immediate actions, and providing effective CPR until the EMS personnel arrive. On today, I want us to recognize and honor a person of courage, a person who loves West Memphis for her actions. She approved that, Mr. Gwen Cannon. Thank you. I really don't know what to say. Um, honestly, like I told um, the mayor, I did it from the heart. There was no way that I could leave. I, it's really hard, the aftermath, I will say that it's really, really hard. Um, but I honestly would do it again if I had to. So, thank you. Thank you.
Next on the agenda are the minutes. Can I get a motion to second to approve so the minutes? Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes are accepted. So we're going to go to our old business, Mr. City Clerk. <clears throat> An ordinance to amend ordinance number 1224, section 3, regarding duties of code enforcement officer for the city of West Memphis, Arkansas, and for other purposes. Hearing that motion, can I get a second? First, a motion and a second. 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 In discussion. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ms. City Clerk, would you give that ordinance a number, please? Ordinance number 2503. This third reading of an ordinance to amend ordinance number 2403 in section 34-30 of the West Memphis Municipal Code to set garbage collection fees and for other purposes. With that being here, can I get a motion on a second? Second. second. All, um, in discussion. Mayor, if you could just elaborate on a little bit of actually what we're doing in that. So, you know. Sure. <laughs> Our explanation is that the city of West Memphis is preparing to go to curbside garbage pickups. And what we are doing, we are getting ready to purchase the curbside uh, garbage can for everyone. Every residential home will have a new uh, curbside dumpster. And to pay for these dumpsters, we had to go up, take a, a dollar increase in order to get there and purchase these dumpsters. So. Will that, will that uh, increase be sunset or will it just continue on and on? Well, once we After purchase the carts them, are paid off. if the council want to decide to sunset, well, I have no problem with that. Sunset means that you will no longer have to pay that dollar twenty-five fee. Is, is basically what that is. And I was thinking that once that uh, the the carts are paid, unless there's some other kind of emergency for the money, then we could sunset it. Okay, I don't have any problem with that. You gonna amend it? Didn't we talk about that? That we were gonna sunset it? Uh, I don't know. James? Well, 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 I don't think we talked about sunset, but now I would like to see once it's paid, of course, now for depreciation. I mean, we do need to start a depreciation account. And I mean, I would like to see at least 50 cents. <coughs> I'm just saying for depreciation, because I mean, when the yeah, equipment yeah. breaks down, you got to have something, you know, to right. replace. You know, but it need, I think it needs to be sunset all except 50 cents. That'll kind of help us, you know, for us, you know, equipment breakdown, something like that. But I wouldn't want to see the whole dollar something stay on it. I mean, I could put, put it in the form of amendment if we like. Or either we could just wait. We, I mean, we can pass it and then you all okay. come back in and yeah, sunset. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. All right. Let me get the I'll vote. I'll make a motion. We accept. It's already. Get the vote. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Let's see, Claire, will you get another number? Ordinance number 2504. <clears throat> All right, this is the second reading of an ordinance, amending ordinance number 1548 to allow the sale, consumption, or possession of beer and wine products on public property owned and designated by the City of West Memphis and supervised by the West Memphis Advertising and Promotion Commission. May I just make a motion that we table it, oh, not table it, but wait till the next meeting to read it Okay. Well, that's the second reading to be back on in two weeks and, uh, for the final reading. James? All right. James. I make a motion we read R1 by title. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Right. Uh, a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a local purchasing agreement buying between DLT Solutions LLC and the City of West Memphis for procurement of products and services under AWS cooperative purchasing agreements and for other purposes. Got a motion and second to approve. Move. And discussion. Will you explain a little bit what sure. this may be? Ms. Amanda, will you come forward, please? Yes, ma'am. Um, this is a, a purchasing agent agreement that Mike Stevenson has came up with. Do you want to know more about the Rubicon program, or would you like to know about how this procedure is carried out? Basically, this company and, and what the city how benefits. It's a three-year program, um, and it's off of bids that have been um, opened by the city uh, in West Virginia. And all that's been reviewed by Mike Stevenson. And the reason why we're going into the agreement is because we are actually going to utilize this program to help us set routes for um, sanitation purposes. 
and also keep up with our trucks and the inventory to make sure um, we, if we have fault codes on the trucks, just to make sure that they're kept up and actually running. I can add to it that the, you know what I'm saying, Chief, to answer the part about how the contract works, uh, it's already been competitively bid mm -hmm. through a procurement process. There's a state statute in Arkansas that allows for procurement uh, purchases, and that's when there is a competitive bidding that takes place for certain types of services, and that's what this particular situation is. So. Um, it, it has been competitively bid, so we're getting the lowest price that we can on this particular service. Thank you. Yes, That's all discussion? Any other discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ms. St. Clair, would you get a resolution on the number? Resolution 2194. All right. We got a resolution. Um, but I think that we would like to add or wait in two weeks. Ordinance. Yeah. Uh, ordinance, I'm sorry, ordinance. Did you all yeah. want to add to ordinance when compared to bidding on the purchase of a police vehicle? I or mean, you I'll make a motion to skip this attempt to get it on the agenda. If it don't, then we make our presentation. Second. All in favor, aye. Uh, uh, opposed? Where is that at? Mr. Gordon? It's we'll on you now. <laughs> Read by title. Second. Second. Aye. Aye. All right. This is an ordinance waiving competitive bidding for the purchase of a police vehicle, declaring an emergency, and for other purposes. I have a motion and second to suspend the rule with a place on the second reading. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? An ordinance waiving competitive bidding for the purchase of a police vehicle, declaring an emergency, and for other purposes. I need a motion and second to further to suspend the rules and places on the third reading. So moved. And all in favor, aye. aye. Opposed? An ordinance waiving competitive bidding for the purchase of a police vehicle, declaring an emergency and for other purposes. Uh, motion and second. So moved. In discussion. I'd like for Major Allen to come up and just. Okay. Smile. Major Allen. <laughs> yes, sir. This is about the uh, the police vehicles uh, waiving competitive bidding and uh, buying this uh, new Tahoe. We that's my understanding. Yes, sir. I mean, we just want you to just give us a good explanation. You know. Did you know anything about it? I've heard talks of it. Okay. So. I know we need more vehicles. Okay. Yeah, we, we so. didn't, uh, some of us didn't know anything about it either, so that's why we wanted somebody that may know something to let us know about it. I just know we picked up three new vehicles yesterday, some cars, and we supposed to have been trying to get some Those more. Those are replacement vehicles that we talking the, about, right? I guess so, yes, From sir. the accidents. That's what I assume, so. Yeah, okay. Yes, But I do know the department need more vehicles. Hey, Jalen, you never know when you get sent back there. Yeah, I know. I tried to ease in here. So. Uh, all right. All the favor, uh, Oh. I think that those, uh, Major Allen, I think that those three you picked up yesterday were Detective. replacements for the protective unit, the detective unit. Yeah. You know, those three yesterday. So there's, I'm trying to figure all this out. There's five in the budget. There were two that were totaled that, are being replaced mostly through the insurance, and then a new one or another one added today. Is that right? No, the, there was five Tahoes in the budget. Right. Three detective cars in the budget. Right. And the three detective cars, y'all approved a month right. ago. Okay, I remember approving those, and, and they then, came and to and us. And the two uh, insurance replacement cars, y'all Approved. Approved, yeah. Two weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. The charges is what they picked up yesterday. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But we're talking about another police vehicle at this time, right? Is that right? Mm -hmm. That is correct. The Tahoe, okay. yeah. I would, I would tend to think that this should be one of the five of the budget. 
But I just wanted him to come up just give us a small yeah. explanation. Uh, we haven't talked about that. This is the first time I've seen it as well. But See, this I, is why. I think, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I think this should be one of the five. And I do know that, that uh, what they reported that they do have a uh, short handed because of, of all the wrecks. And it takes so much takes so much time to get the top holes to the state bid. Right. This is, of course, we want to we want to give the police department and all of our departments everything that they need because they're so valuable to us. But this is why we have committees and commissions to discuss all these type things. So when we get on the floor, there will be absolutely no confusion about what is going on. So we do want to approve this and because we know they need it. But as far as the police commission is concerned, we knew nothing about it. And if we had known, had it been come through proper channels, police commission referred to budget, then back to council, all of these questions would have been avoided today. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Wilson, I agree with you, and I make sure that that's the proper procedure from now. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, aye. Yeah. Aye. Yeah. Opposed? Ms. City Clerk, would you get that ordinance or number? Ordinance number 2505. I need a motion and a second to approve the permission for me to sign the rule. Oh, I'm sorry, we had an emergency clause. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Let me get a motion and second to approve section two. Section two. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It passed. Now, can I get a motion and second to have permission to sign a contract with So moved. Yeah, that, we really already took care of that too, with the or with the okay. resolution. So. All right. Yeah. Committee reports. We're starting down yeah. the line, right? Police. Police. Uh, we had a meeting on Wednesday, April the 10th, and uh, came up. The grand jury didn't have enough evidence to indict the officers. Mm -hmm. They were uh, exonerated, and uh, our officer that was injured in the accident, he's still off duty. It is uh, unsure when he will return. The license plate readers that we talked about at our last meeting, uh, they're going to be installed within the next two weeks, and we had a change of time for our meeting. Uh, we went, were meeting Wednesday at noon. It's going to change to 4 o'clock in the afternoon on the second Wednesday of the month. And uh, our resource officers are uh, at all the schools, and for the last three weeks, they've been working real smoothly. Everything's been going good. Uh, and our violent crime unit is back up and running. With our, our four officers are working, working the violent crime unit. Uh, we had a uh, a couple of people came out, a couple of citizens came out and spoke at our last commission meeting. Dennis Morris and uh, Wesley Kitchen. And they uh, spoke about the big trucks parking in the neighborhoods. And we still, we uh, got the chief to, 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 to talk about that a little bit. And we still in process of, uh, we're going to meet with them again about the same issue until we get it resolved. That's all of my report. Thank you. Mr. Holt, did you have anything with the park? I think he's awake now. All right. <laughs> Mr. Kroon, airport? Uh, yes, the Air airport commission met this morning and uh, they approved the payment of $6,000 in audit fees to uh, Jackson Howell and Associates. Um, Cassandra, the um, general manager for the airport, attended the Arkansas Department of Aeronautics commission meeting and the uh, grant that we're receiving from the Aeronautics Committee uh, is a 90-10 grant where the city pays 10 and the, and the state pays 90. And that's for the uh, runway pavement rehab and marking project. And uh, we, the commission also approved custom uh, pavement maintenance and safety, who was the lowest bidder uh, to do the project of the uh, the runway marking rehab and the uh, remarking project. And that concludes my report. All right. Let's go down the utility department. Okay. Utility met uh, April 11th, 2019. Uh, General Manager Todd Peterson, he reported it 206 days since the last recordable injury and 548 days since any lost, any lost injury since March. For the, uh, and, um, they had um, approved uh, to sign an agreement with KTI proposed to prepare for 
um, other words, them as a defender, and then also represented by Tom P. And they, well, cut part of this off. But anyway, they approved that to get KTI in to uh, do a uh, proposal, get a proposal together for the utility department as well. But that's pretty much what sums it up. And they're still uh, working on the openings that they have to get them filled. Okay. Did that complete your report? Yeah. Councilman Willis on the fire and Chamber of Commerce. I don't have one on the fire, we got the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. The Chamber of Commerce, we met on uh, April the 10th at noon. We were welcomed by Councilman Wayne Kroon, which is the president of the Chamber, and uh, Wayne was the speaker for the day. <clears throat> did you want to edit him, Mr. Crow? <laughs> <laughs> he he uh, did it all. But we, uh, I do want to highlight a couple of things that were talked about on uh, April the 25th, which is coming up. We've got the water tower grand lighting ceremony that's 530. Like for everybody in the city to come out for that. Is that the Mr. Croom water tower? That's the Mr. Croom's water tower. <laughs> Unfortunately, I will not be present. I will be at the uh, coalition meeting over in the uh, wind. Darn. Right. Then on, on, on April the 27th, though, we've got a Delta Arts on the levee, and that's at Waverly Plantation. That starts at 5 p.m. Okay. One thing I did want to hit on back here that I think the public all needs to know, and, and, and would like to see them make an effort to uh, contribute to this. In Holmes Hammett Scholarship, there's been eight applicants so far, and I think there's money already there, but I was impressed that there's uh, eight very, very fine applicants already got to be already lined up for them. So I'd appreciate it if everybody would uh, do something to contribute to that to make sure these kids get these scholarships in behalf of uh, homes. Other than that, that's uh, the end of mine. All right. Thank you. That's all, Ms. Harris? Yeah. yeah. OK. Well, I had three quick announcements. First of all, I know many of you all heard about the big expansion that we got. Coca-Cola has been a valuable business and with already in our community. And they had to have decided to do an expansion, a $33 million expansion with a 200,000 square foot new building. Um, it's going to hire around 60 to 70 new jobs here, good paying jobs in our city. I want to truly thank Mallory Darby and Phil Sorrell for their hard work and all of you for your support and whatever they may need, whether it's the pilot program or just making sure they have what they need to be successful. So Coca-Cola is expanding here. and, and then let me say in three weeks, I think I'm going to have another bigger announcement that I'm very excited about that I announced. Give me a month. It's going to be good for the city of West Memphis. We are truly on a winning streak economically, so uh, just be looking out for that. As well as um, I want to acknowledge La Quinta Inn had the uh, big grand opening yesterday. It was a big success. If you ever went into a hotel, into their hotel, it's very good. It's a very good looking uh, facility. And they're doing good business, and that only helps the city of West Memphis. Also, the flooding. We had a quick meeting in our pre-council dealing with the flooding. And that's one thing I definitely want us to talk more about to the public, that we are doing a lot to help this flooding here in West Memphis. But it's some things that we just don't have control over. But we're looking out real soon for us to have our city engineers and everyone involved to get a message out to the community about uh, what we can do to make this flooding better to relieve this water better or get you more understanding of how this process works as well. So that's all I had in the announcements. Now, uh, <clears throat> OK. And also, last thing, Mr. Allen, you may want to help me on this one. Many of you all may have heard about the curfew that we already have on law. Uh, I've been working with uh, Mr. Allen, and he gave me some suggestions how we can place teeth into that curfew. It's already passed. It's already approved. So we're going to start to enforce that curfew. You want to come up with anything, Mr. Allen? Okay. <laughs> well, pretty much, uh, if, you're seven, if you're under 17 years old and you're not, at, you're not at work and you're not with an adult on a school night, after 11 o'clock, you are breaking the curfew law. So we want to make sure that our children are safe in our community. That's one of the things that we are placing forward. And there's a reason why we're doing those things. But we just want to make sure that the community is aware of it and they know 
it is approval, or it is law here in the city of West Memphis. And we're gonna do everything we can to make sure our children are safe. And that also leads down to our citizen request. I have three young adults that goes to West Junior High that were great friends with Taylor and Vale. And they're gonna come up and speak to you and I just want the council to hear them. I went to West and I think I stayed about three hours, three or four hours, just listening to young people. I'm telling you guys, they knew more than what we think they know. And we have to start listening. So I'm gonna first start out with Miss Mary Bailey. Come up and get your name and your address and you have five minutes to talk with the council. Good afternoon. My name is Mary Bailey and I stay in Proctor. I would like, I have some issues that I would like to address. And my first issue that I would like to address is these adults, these men specifically, standing by stores. Like, they have the rights to stand by stores, the stores or whatever, but we would like polices around the stores so we can feel safer walking into the store. And I would also like, I would also like East Wander and West to come together as one whole school, yes. or like every quarter just so we can know each other before we go to the high school, move on to the high school. Just have like a freshman day or something together so we can just talk to each other, get to know each other more before we move on to the high school. And I would like the police to come to the school and interfere in our lives more. Like play basketball with us at gym, come flip with us and have just have fun with us. Just to put a name and a face to the people that are getting shot around West Memphis. Everybody at West Junior High knew Taylor and we knew him very personally. We know that he didn't deserve that. All he wanted to do was play basketball and keep a smile on his face. We know he wasn't involved in any game or anything. We just want to come and I'm very sorry that we had that Taylor killing had to make us come out like this. Thank you. Any questions? Well, I just want to say the idea that you said about all the schools coming together, that's very important because when I sat down and talked with you guys, I know I was talking to some of the young men and they explained to me that just because they live on the west side, they are viewed as being part of the west side gangs by the east side gangs. And they grew up with each side not liking each other because of what side they live on. That's why I'm pushing this campaign of One West Memphis. We all want West Memphis. So definitely, I'd love to see that happen. I'm gonna pitch that idea to uh, Dr. Collins. Because we gotta do more to get you all together. But through the mentoring program, we're gonna make that happen. Thank you, young lady. Ms. Bay. Hey, yeah, I'd like to elaborate on that too with the uh, police. We want to do more community policing. We want, to, we want to get involved with our youth, with our children. We had it going in a while back, a few years back. We did, had some things out in the park and different places for our youth. And our police came out and got to know them. And, and that was good. The kids, you know, you're not scared of the police. You get to know somebody, it's easy to talk to them. And we need more of that. We got some good resource officers that's really concerned about our, our, our kids, but we need all of them to come out and do the same thing. That's, that's all. Are you, are you, when you said, mention the stores, are you talking about like your convenience stores? Yes, sir. The loitering, the, the yes, sir. being around the stores? Yes, sir. Thank you. You know, I want to just say something. Uh, <clears throat> I spoke with uh, our Senate and state representative represent this area, and we got a new bill that's, that have been, that, that's passed uh, starting this year called Senate Bill S-152. It's revamping the whole juvenile system. And what they're looking at doing is putting more money back into the community to kind of, you know, work with the juveniles before they get to a certain point. So, and uh, I know, <clears throat> excuse me, Senator Ingram, I know he's, he's looking now to see what he could, you know, what, what's in the bill that would help aid our community as well. When both, both of your representatives, I talked with them, and they're looking now trying to see what they could do to kind of help the community out. So, you got something else coming on the pipeline that should help us out. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, young lady. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Miss Amaria Calloway, come forward, please. 
Good afternoon, I'm Maria Calloway. I'm 14 years old and I attend West Junior High. I also live in West Virginia's Arkansas. I'm here to speak on some of the issues in our community. I think we should focus more on these grown men. Honestly, they are the ringleaders of this side climbing mess. They got kids killing kids. They are giving these young boys guns and telling them to stand their ground by killing the next person. And it has gotten outrageous. I'm tired of seeing my fellow classmates on t-shirts. Can y'all just close your eyes and imagine the pain I'm feeling right now? My heart really aches because I have to bury somebody that really meant the world to me tomorrow. I just come here today to tell y'all it's time for a change. Miss wow. <laughs> Madison Perry. <clears throat> I'm Madison Perry. I'm 14 years old. I go to West Junior High. I'm a freshman. I'm going to start my speech off by saying I don't feel safe in my neighborhood, even though it's small and barely got people living in there. Stackhouse was from there. Y'all should know he the one that killed like two people at that club in one night. And I have a three-year-old brother who lives there. And I couldn't imagine my world without him in there. Have y'all ever just stopped and thought about your neighborhood, how safe it is, how unsafe it is, if you can walk without being disturbed and you just... just stand there and view it. I also want to talk about the game bangers and how young men just out here in the world taking risks mm -hmm. because of the next fella who was in the game so they automatically have to be in the game. They do it just so they can be hard and have something to claim. But little do you know, it's somebody's son out there if he gets shot and killed, we just see it, him as another individual who is a part of gang and off the streets now. But we don't view him as someone's son. I'm going to take a moment to talk about Taylor Vale and the tragedy that happened. Also, show y'all his shirt that we made for him. He was a sweet, smart young man. He wasn't. He was more of a man than any boy on the street now. He was funny. He did a lot of impressions, like right here. This is an Instagrammer named Slime Ball, and he used to always mock him. He always made this face right here. And every time he did it, it just made me crack up. He was bright, handsome. He had a future in basketball, and he was going to be famous. The famous Valen Tail Three, Valen Tail Three. Um, he was innocent and very popular. Everyone knew him and loved him, and he was very respectful to adults and kids. That's why this is very hard for everybody. It also took him to realize what Smith is really need a change. Everything feels so wrong about the situation. Situation. Wait until a young innocent life dies in order to say it's time for a change. In my experience throughout all of this, I haven't had much sleep since it happened. Last night was the first night I actually got some sleep. I, I Every night I wake up out of my sleep, panting, having a small panic attack, asking myself why, why did it have to be him or am I next? Because I'm so scared that somebody, anybody would just shoot up my house looking for stack house. You know, I want to talk about weapons. It's unsafe in many people's eyes. So many of my friends are leaving me next year because their families are moving away because of the danger. There's nothing here to do because of the gun violence. Every, everything West Memphis had ever had got shut down because of the fighting, shooting, or just straight up not wanting to deal with the game bangers. I have some quotes from people in West Junior High. Jackson Bennett, eighth grader, quoted, it ain't good, and I agree with him. Gracie Ransom, eighth grader, quoted, it ain't safe. It's not a good place to raise your kids. And I agree with that. Madison Chesney, ninth grader, said she didn't like it. It's not my favorite place. It's unsafe. Kayla Beth Sample, ninth grader, quoted, it's a piece of crap. Freddie Thorne and Luke Martin both quoted, it's very violent. It has nothing to do here. Everybody hate each other. I disagree. I think they're trying to say that it's full of animosity. And they also said it suck. Thank you for your time and hope this opened your eyes to realize what Smith is need to change. Any questions?
says, we all make up 50% of our population, but you're 100% of our future, and we got to listen to the young people. Thank you. You know, I would like to say it takes a lot of courage uh, for you young people to come up here and address these issues. And, uh, and uh, the, the young man that was involved in that shooting last week evidently was a real nice young man. And uh, it's a, another young person out of our community that you won't see again. And, uh, but again, it, I want to tell you that I admire you coming in here and speaking up and talking about the things that you guys see and what your ideas are. Um, I would like to see that the uh, council gets more involved in the schools. And I've had some preliminary discussions with uh, your superintendent. And uh, it's, it's like each one of us in our wards have a school. And uh, it would be good if two, the two representatives in that ward would also uh, inter intervene with your school. and. Uh, I think that would be a really good idea too if we could get more involved in your school system. Thank you. And I would like to say it is a good idea, but we also need the ministers and the preachers to get out to churches and come to the school, walk the streets. We need some prayer. It's going to take prayer to do this. The police can't do it all. It's going to take us coming together, praying. It's going to take God. This is a God thing. That's what's going to stop. It's going to take us coming together as a people and pray. Instead of pointing fingers, we're going to have to come together and love one another. And that's what Jesus was all about. Love one another. And we learn how to love each other and come together in situations like this. We can make it. Only God can do it. Mr. Richard Massey, when you come forward. Also, before you, I'd like to let them know as well. Uh, one that L.R. Jackson is planning on having <coughs> stopped the violent rally the last Saturday of this month. And they have a dynamic speaker, and I'm quite sure the press is, is familiar, very familiar with him. And I'd like to invite all of y'all to come. It's the, the last Saturday of this morning at 11 o'clock. They're going to block the streets off. They're going to have a stop the violent rally. Stop the violent rally. Good afternoon. My name is Richard Massey. I'm 14 years old, and I attend West Junior High School. I currently live in Marion, but it absolutely pains me to see my closest peers and my friends suffer each and every day in West Memphis. Like so many members of my community, I am deeply concerned about the direction of West Memphis. Less 16-year-old Halen Bell, a charismatic, promising, positive young man who was senselessly taken from us, serve as an example of how the gun violence epidemic of West Memphis is affecting us all. In fact, West Memphis is comfortably at number 15 on the top 100 most dangerous cities in America per capita list. That statistic isn't unsettling enough to make you strive to make change, so I'm not sure what will. Behind the bloody mass that covers West Memphis as of now, there's a psychology that consists of abandonment, betrayal, and despair. As you may have guessed, this psychology comes from the absence of father figures in one's childhood. This cycle of absent fathers marks the beginning of various behavioral issues and mental health issues. I, for one, truly believe that the seeds of influential male role models in our community is the cause for the staggering crime statistics that plague our community now. <clears throat> Today, I present to you a three-point initiative that plans to deter violence, um, the absence of fathers in our community, and the destruction of our children. Point one calls for less workplace discrimination, specifically the discrimination of the criminally convicted. It is now time to allow the criminally convicted to obtain employment, considering they're the overwhelming majority when it comes to being incapable of financially supporting their children. Point two calls for the WMPD to authorize more proactive policing by increasing presence in high-risk neighborhoods and within our schools, as they've already done impressively. Not only will this effort curtail crime, but it will also help improve relations amongst our brave law enforcement and our community. The third and last point calls for the city of West Memphis to invest in our future. By this, I mean the implementation of new after school programs dedicated to building character, charisma, and intelligence within our youth. Simply, it is time to make a change in West Memphis so we can no longer stand and shed more blood, no more tears. 
Thank you. Yeah. Any questions? We're listening. Yes, sir. And we're going to do these things. Yes, sir. I want to recognize Principal Tyler. Yeah. And who you Ms. have Gann. with you? Ms. Ann? Ms. Gann. Ms. Gann. Mm -hmm. We just want to recognize you all. And Mother, Ms. Charlotte Perry, how Thank you doing? You. Thank you all for allowing them to come speak to us. I mean, you can see from their conversation that they are very knowledgeable, and I hope we learned a lot. And we're going to do some things to work to make West Memphis better, because we all committed to a better city. Thank you all. Thank you. I think you've done a great job coming and communicating with our children. It's kind of gave them an opportunity to have a voice that they feel like they didn't have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mayor, you just might have met your opponent in four to eight years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I asked him when, when we was in my office to let me have uh, another four years. So by the time he graduated, I've been a brand by election. So, yeah. But I'll be honest with you. If it's someone that's going to continue to move our city forward, I'll give the seat up in a minute because it's about West Memphis and not me. Amen. Thank you. I would like to thank each and every one of you youngsters for coming out, being a mother of five. I most certainly understand your fears and your concerns. And believe me, as Ms. Harris was saying, of course, it's going to take prayer. But it's going to take more than prayer. It's going to take action on our part as well. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. God gave us the common sense to do the things mm -hmm. that we have to do. Mm -hmm. He's not just going to come down and tell us or put a finger on us and say, do this or that. He gave us everything that we needed out on the inside to do what we have to do. Mm -hmm. So you all keep up with us, and we're going to keep up with you. And most certainly, we want to see some changes take place in the city of West Memphis. Mm -hmm. yes, this council is in one accord. Amen. Young people, I. Uh, grew up in West Memphis, born and raised in West Memphis. And I understand right now you all have pain for the classmate that you have lost. Um, West Memphis is not a bad place to live. Mr. Mundy and some of the other people in the audience know that when we was growing up in West Memphis, we had things to do. We had activities to, from dark till 3 o'clock in the morning at the Boys Club and Girls Club in West Memphis. If we can just get back to giving our kids activities and keeping them away from gangbangers and playstations with violence, and it starts at home with the parents, help raise your kids. Because the mayor, the police, they cannot, they cannot raise your kids. It starts with all of us. It takes a village to raise a child. That's what I was raised born on A Street. People on 8th Street helped my mom with 11 kids to raise us, okay? And I, I can sit here honestly say out of 11 kids, I'm the only one that went to, to jail, okay? <laughs> it starts at home with the parents. And I'm not going to fuss about it, but parents got to help us. Right. The mayor, the police, and other parents raise their kids. Okay, the school cannot raise you guys. Amen. They can educate you. But it takes the parents to start yes. at home. Amen. And so if the parents are listening, you start at home. You can save your child. Mm -hmm. And let's start today. That's right. Thank you for coming. Like we, we respect you. We take what you're saying to heart. Yeah, and yeah. myself, with the mayor and the city council, we're going to work hard to improve this city. Mayor, I'd like to say a couple words. I had a uh, granddaughter that went through West, did very well. Uh, but Joyce and I were involved. The parents have to be involved in the school. They should be involved. They should know what's going on. That's right. uh, she's at Senior mm -hmm. High now and doing yes. great. Yes. Senior High is a good place. West Memphis, like uh, Joyce said, it's not a bad place. But this, this city council and this new mayor, we're going to do some improvements here where it's going to take care of a lot of you young people as what we can do uh, to help your lives and help you grow and be mature. I pray every night for this city and for our schools and for our young people because I feel like that it's, it's, it's not just me, it's you, it's you, and you. Everyone has to work together, together. But if we all work together, this city is going to grow 
and will be something that we'll all be proud of. Thank you. And appreciate you guys doing what you did. Yeah. Thank you, Norm. Glad to hear from you all again. Yeah. Keep us informed. Hang around if you can. Uh, we're going to call up our next speaker. Uh, it's Mr. Wesley Kitchens. Will you come forward? We're going to get five minutes as well. Give your name and your address. Kitchens. I live at 1306 Stratford Drive here in West Memphis. I've been living there 28 years. And the reason I'm here today is because I signed up to speak today before I attended the police commission meeting because I was one of the two that was talking about the trucks in the neighborhoods. You can get along with trucks in neighborhoods. I've been doing it for 23 years. But the truck drivers are going to have to adhere to certain things to get along in the community. Now, the man that has brought up the major complaint on this, I talked to him, and that his two major complaints are the truck parks out in the street and the truck idles all night. That would be easy for the city to stop. You don't have to have the police commission and the city council getting involved in all of that. That's just a big personal issue between two neighbors that could easily be solved. But the, what I'm going to say today, especially after listening to these young people speak, this seems trivial. But uh, if the city council in the future has to come up with something on this, I would ask that y'all take the time to try to make a happy medium between people trying to make a living. I'm an owner operator. I own that truck sitting in my driveway. So with company trucks, they don't have to worry about, but you need to have some certain things. Don't park out in the street, don't park in grass, park on paid parking, don't idle the trucks. If you need to come up with some way, I suggested that you come up with a city heavy parking permit that where code enforcement could come out, make sure that the person meets the criteria and allow that truck to park there. Every year I pay $550 to the United States Treasury heavy road use tax. That's what every truck pays to, for tearing the streets up. West Memphis could come up with a heavy parking permit for trucks, big RVs. I'm not complaining. There's a man in my neighborhood that's got a huge tour bus. I, I'm not complaining at all. That thing has to be over $200,000. Anybody that can afford a nice house, that big tour bus, and maintain his house and everything, he's an asset to West Memphis. He's not a hindrance to us. And with these young people that were here, you know, they need... All we're trying to do is make a living. I'm no different than a plumber keeping his truck in his driveway or air conditioner repair. You can drive through, but you can drive through my section of town between Clement, Broadway, and Colonial. And if y'all start trying to you know, change how people park and everything, because some people can't move their vehicles in the back because the developers were trying to get as many houses as they could in there. And there's literally not enough room to get to the back because most of them and that was one of the reasons that we picked the house that we did. I could get my race car and my boat in the backyard, but a lot of them put the central air unit right in the way, so it would be a major deal. But anybody in this neighborhood or in this city that can you know, have an RV, travel trailer, semi-truck, that within reason, and that would be where y'all come in, is y'all need to set what reason is. But that's all I wanted to say about that. I, at first, right now, the police commission is fixing to discuss and see if we can kind of find a happy medium and then present to y'all. But sometimes when the city councils try to do it, like the EPA is always trying to get cities to pass no idling ordinances for trucks. Sounds great, but what they don't consider is the truck driver may be sitting in the truck stop or over here at AmeriCorps or something like that when it's 90 degrees or 30 degrees and he can't idle his truck. And believe it or not, some council have, have passed ordinance that says no idling over 15 minutes unless you have a pet in the truck. The pet makes it okay to idle the truck. So as I say, if it comes to a full city council, I just hope y'all get my input, other truck drivers' input, people that own RVs, people that are complaining about them, and kind of get something that makes everybody happy if there's such a thing. But that's all I have to say about it. Thank you. Ms. Furlow? Is she here, Ms. Furlow? I don't see her. Last time, Ms. Furlow, she's not here. We're going to move forward to Ms. Simmons. Will you come forward, please? No, 
moment of five minutes. Give your name and your address. Simmons. I, my address is 421 South 14th Street here in the city. Um, I, I like to say good evening to the mayor, the council, and everyone out in the area there. You know, I had this all together, what I was going to talk about, how I was going to talk about it. Those young people, I'm still emotional from listening to them, and I don't know whether today I will be able to do what I had first started, wanted to do but I'm gonna try. I'll be back two weeks from now though. Um, and this is still my way of opposing having anything being done with the Roberta Jackson building on South 14th and Polk Avenue other than things that's going to um, help these children, help their parents, help some of these people that are out here, older adults that are doing some things that just not acceptable. I had a person tell me about a week ago in reference to why I'm here today that I was beating a dead horse. I just let it stay. I didn't comment on it. The reason I didn't comment on it is because I couldn't find a thing to say right then with that in mind because that's telling me that each time I get up here and I address this council that I'm wasting my time and I don't feel that. To say that I'm wasting my time when I'm speaking on behalf of this community and especially our young people, to say that I'm wasting my time is something I just don't agree with at all. This is what I have. This is my future. These are my children. No matter what color, they are still my children. I value every last one of them. And whatever I can do for any of them, I'm not wasting my time. And that horse that they say uh, uh, I'm beating, maybe that horse is just unconscious. Maybe that horse needs some whatever the, you do to bring them back to get them from being unconscious. Maybe that's what's needed. Maybe we need to have a, a meeting not only of the minds but of the heart to understand that no matter who we are, we have them and they need us. They need us not only at the city council level, they need us at the church level, they need us at the organizational level, they need us. Not only do they need us, but they need us to listen to them. The one thing that we always tried, and I'm guilty, is of trying to put something together for young people without involving the young people that we're supposedly putting together. These children are, are, are a lot of, you know, we say these days, I can't do nothing for me. I don't know what's going on with these children. These children are acting crazy. Well, yeah, sure, because we have not done what we're supposed to do as the elders. And we have to once recognize that these things that these children are going through now started years ago. It started 50 years ago. Pray out of school. No uh, discipline. Not any of this. Not tell your mother you can't whip your children because if you do, you're going to jail. Mother gets scared, don't do anything because she's working sometimes two jobs to take care of these children. But if they need discipline, they can't get it. Who's going to respect who? When fathers that are there, if they're there, they're under the same law. These are laws that's governing 
how we treat our children. The school system's failing them. The parents, you say, are failing them. You say the churches are failing them. So where do these children go when they need to speak to somebody? Where do they go? Who do they go to? That place is large enough to gather a lot of the programs that we need that's going to help us help our children. We can't do it by ourselves. Nobody here can. We need each other to help them. So here's one thing that I just want to bring this up, and then I'm, I'm quitting. I'm five five minutes. minutes to back. Oh, it's up. Is it? Yes, ma'am. I'm through. I'll okay. come back. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Is Mr. Larry Brewer here today? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I'm Larry Brewer, Brewer Services Incorporated, a small, small company. Uh, I'm here to express my disgust about the way citizens and contractors are treated in this town by code enforcement and that office in the back. Uh, and this excludes Morris. He's a new guy, so I'm, I'm leaving him out of it. Uh, this started back in 2007 when I bought, when I opened my business up. I was told I'm from Lepanto. I do a lot of work. I was raised here. I was raised in Marion on the fire department in Marion for 13 years. Worked a tornado here in West Memphis when it tore up everything down by the dog track. But anyway, I was told I had to buy a West Memphis privilege license. I presented a state statute that said I did not have to have more than one privilege license in the state of Arkansas unless I had a brick and mortar facility in this town or in any town. Every town in the state of Arkansas abides by that except West Memphis. They do now. This year, I refused to buy one. I refused to buy one. I handed the clerk the state law, and I was told this is how we do it in West Memphis. You're required to buy a privilege license. So we're down here working at 620 West Broadway trying to get a donut shop open that should have taken three months. It took 10 months because of the harassment from code enforcement on unnecessary uh, issues, a GFI receptacle not accessible because it's sitting behind a countertop coffee pot. Ridiculous. This, this hindered the woman. I met with Paul Luker to discuss, and, and, and it's Johnny Brown's who it is. I went to his office to discuss the problems I was having with Johnny Brown, and I was told, we're not going to sit in here and talk about Johnny Brown. This is my office. I was laughed at in that meeting, and I asked him, I said, tell me what's so funny, Paul. I said, because right now, I'm losing money as a contractor, the plumber's losing money, the uh, general contractor's losing money, the owner of the business is trying to open losing money, and y'all are losing tax revenue. I said, so tell me what's funny where I can laugh with you. And this, this goes on and on. We, we built a new service for this donut shop because electrical service wasn't big enough. My brother's a master electrician. I hired him under my company. Built this service. Couldn't get a green tag on the service until I got Mr. Wheelis and Mr. Holt involved in on it. Now, Mr. Wheelis was there the morning. They finally green tagged it, refused to put the meter in because the door would open on the bottom and there is electricity in there. I said, I'll put a lock on there that's recognized by ISO standards across the country, lock out, tag out. I said, I'll put a lock on there, but they can't get in it. Then I got green tag for that, no meter. He said, they'll cut your lock. I said, well, they'll cut your little tag that the utility company puts on there because that's all that would be on there and that's all that's on there today. Uh, so I put the lock on there to keep the kids out of the bottom. Got red tag for a lock being on there. Took the lock off, put a, a zip tie on there. Got red tag for the zip tie. I mean, it's just ignorant, stupid stuff. And we go back to the Coke coming over here and the big industries coming in, and I applaud y'all for that. 
but you still need the mom and pop restaurants and you need the mom and pop businesses all along Broadway, down Missouri Street. I grew up in this town and I was even asked, why do you care? I care because I grew up here. I visit here. I come eat here. I work here. And there's, there's more contractors out there with the same issues that are, that are afraid of retaliation. Maybe I'm bullheaded enough where I don't care. You know, I stand up for my rights. Thank you. Thank you. I think I know you. You may know someone that works here as well. Mr. Tommy Moore, will you come up? Is Mr. Logan with you or here? Welcome. He, he's not here. Okay. Hold on, before his five minutes start, do you know this guy right here? Uh, no, I'll claim him in, uh, in private, but not in public. Uh, my name is Tommy Martin. I actually reside in Marion, but I'm here to, uh, to just to tell y'all an event that we have this weekend and invite y'all out at the complex. Um, first of all, I'm a, I'm a tournament director for the United States Specialty Sports Association, which is, we call it U-Trip. It's the uh, largest uh, sanctioning body for travel baseball, softball, football, basketball. It's real similar to AAU, but it, it encompasses every sport. We are having a tournament at Tilden Rogers, and we have 69 teams coming from six different states. Um, I got with uh, Director Parker, and he looked back on his log, and he, he says it's the largest single event at Tilden Rogers in more than 20 years. So. Um, we're pretty excited about it. It's about 785 baseball players. Um, we're expecting around 3,000 people out at the park that day. It's 100 and, about 140 baseball games in one day. It's a one-day event. We're going to be on every field out there. But uh, the way that this thing really grew legs, we, we actually planned three events out there this year, and our first one was in March, and we had about 30 teams, and then this one we were hoping for around 30 or 40, but I got a, a coach that that signed up and registered for the event from McCook, Nebraska. It's a 12-hour drive. He registered an 11-year-old baseball team. So I called him and I said, Coach, do you realize you registered for an event in Arkansas? And he said, yes, they actually have a kid on their team that's got stage four cancer at, Lebon at St. Jude. And he's been here since July. So his, uh, his 10 and 11-year-olds are taking a couple of days extra off of school and they're driving down on Friday. Um, They've actually got 18 rooms booked at the, the new La Quinta Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. Um, going to plan our one-day event. Their teammate Calvin's going to come over. Um, he's actually got cleared by his doctors to get to dress out. He's going to throw out the first pitch. So we ended up making this all about play for Calvin. Um, we're going to donate the proceeds of the event to equally between St. Jude and to Calvin's family. His dad is a, uh, they actually have four kids. Um, they've had to rent an apartment in Memphis because mom and Calvin have been here since July. Dad's back home in Nebraska um, with his with his three other children. Um, so I, as you can imagine, one income, you know, in two households is pretty substantial. Um, Twelve hours apart at that. So you know, we're hoping that this, you know, that that we can start attracting these teams to come to West Memphis and to Tilden Rogers and. And we can go back to, to the days that, that we all remember in the late 90s and early 2000s when you'd drive through there on Saturday and you'd see the, the ballparks absolutely full. And uh, U-Trip has a, has a formula that it's about $135 a day per player is spent in the local economy. So, you know, we're going to have just, just shy of 800 players this, this weekend. So, you know, an extra $150,000 to $200,000 worth of, worth of retail sales just from from this one day event um, and you know I don't know about you but being a small business owner I read something one time that says that the uh, the average dollar spent at a small business is spent three to seven times in that economy before it ever leaves so you know it, it's really hard to tell how, how big of an effect it'll have it'll you know it it's it's a snowball effect for sure but you know we appreciate the parks department I drove by there yesterday it was 
it, all hands were on deck. Um, there were actually five utility trucks out there ch checking to make sure every light was working. Um, they already had temporary fences put up. They had the pitching mound set. They actually cut trenches into the into the grass, preparing for the rain, in case it. You know, they're they're doing everything they can to make sure this event, you know, goes on. And I applaud their efforts. And all, we just need a Mother Nature to, to to take it easy on us the next 48 hours if we could. Thank y'all. I'm sorry. I didn't know they did. Uh, I guess with uh, with with Tracy out of town, somebody dropped the ball. <laughs> I'll make it up to you in two weeks. How's that? That'll work. That'll work. Um, that's all we have. Uh, anything else? Or? Hey, I'd like to just reiterate something real quick. Mr. Brewer left before I could even say a thing, but I did go out and intervene between him and Johnny. Johnny told him two little simple things to do. There was no problem. He understood. Johnny understood, I understood, and then it still comes to this. But the guy from what I can gather from what Johnny showed me, he never showed, he never came back to finish the two items that were supposed to be hooked up. He did want the meter put on with everything hot in that, that whole box, no wires on. And <coughs> I, I think I'd have done the same thing, I'd have refused that myself. <laughs> Off it by. Red John.